Hello everybody, welcome back to another video for the day. Now we're going right back into r slash Tales of the Neckbeard. Beforehand, be sure to like the video, comment down below during the video if there's something you would like to discuss, and afterwards consider subscribing and turning on them amazing notifications. Alrighty, let's go. Our first story comes to us from username Adidas Demon. More questionable interactions with Science Beard featuring lunch friends. Hey y'all, it's Kay from the last post of me realizing I have a neckbeard in my Earth and Space class. I have a few other stories of this kid, and I was telling the last story to my friend in C lunch. Everyone in this lunch group knows of this neckbeard and told me some odd things about this dude. Cast includes me, Kay, the narrator, Hispanic thespian, lover of dad caps and denim jackets, listener of rap, trap, and hip hop, watcher of cartoons and anime artist, mellowing out right now, still got a mouth on me though, and mourning because I can't go to Rolling Loud 2020 down in Miami. Skater boy, a greasy yet funny dude, lanky, a frick boy, acne scars and long hair, still smells nice surprisingly skates obviously but drives to school, thrasher hoodies and beat up vans, actually smart despite smoking like the world is going to end, is in a few on campus college courses, similar taste in music to me, insert the crackles of the vape. Art fave, my anime friend, a good friend of mine, small cute and Korean, knows how to dress from cute skirts and sweaters to baggy dad jeans and streetwear anime tees, incredibly intelligent and talented, an avid anime watcher, is in AP art, I was in there until I dropped into credit recovery. Recovery. Nice to all, I got her to good music and anime recommendations. I consider her a neckbeard bait, minus her absolute love for Playboy Cardi. Salad, chill mutual, gorgeous girl, tall, in my English class, artist and stressing to no end, always working on homework or art, yoga pants and cute adidas jackets and windbreakers, understanding and sweet, has tea about everyone. I'm calling her Salad because she works at some small salad chain and she isn't much to the story, she was texting her friends and doing psychology homework. Science Beard, SB, the man, the myth, the beard. We're talking about him. He wasn't in the library with us, thank God. Large, six foot four, and fat, weird, full grown neck beard with a wispy mustache, basketball shorts, and New Balance sneakers with tight graphic tees, playing obscure RPGs and DD. No fedora, just this fedora that counts though. Okay, I can appreciate good wordplay when I see it. Let's begin. My group was in the library, sitting in the far back, eating snacks and vibing. I was just done telling Skater Boy and Artfav my story with Science Beard and the look on their face was perplexed but like it was familiar. They both asked me what he looked like and his name. I gave them a good description and SB's real name. It both clicked to them the O oh, echoes in the crowded library and they both instantly quiet down. Artfav whispering to lower the chances of us getting kicked out. I know that dude, he had him in one of my classes sophomore year. I think it was math or AP world history. <laughs> me giggling like a fourth grader, I'm telling you. He's off his shots. Everyone in football and athletics told me this dude has a sm- Insert the gross fact skater board tells us. I gag as he goes into great detail about Beard's private parts, then explaining how this science Beard was in football. I can understand how he would have been picked. Most of the football players are bulky and lean, so having a large Stay Puft Marshmallow Man would have helped our chances to go to the playoffs. Science Beard was a sore thumb in the group, considering how our Beard acts. Everyone hated Science Beard because of how intelligent he acted, thinking not wanting a girlfriend was a personality trait to a large hormone enraged team. I knew a few of the football players from my weird middle school phase, I still talk to them on Snapchat and have two classes with a few who are good friends of mine. Believe it or not, they are not shoddy people at all. They're funny and like to horseplay so there's that. They don't take shot laying down either, they do so when it comes to the coaches though. Science Beard got into some deep shot with one of the coaches and a popular player for arguing the with them and boasting about it. Art Fave adds on this. Science Beard was in one of her sophomore classes and she was forced to sit by him through the whole school year. She complained how SB would just stare at her, big eyes, leaning in, the whole nine yards. She was so uncomfortable and tried to talk about it to her teacher who seemed to blow it off, telling her this. He's just trying to be friendly, maybe he's shy. He would always try to correct classmates and even the teacher and you can imagine how that turned out. Our fave believed he was on the spectrum due to his behavior around her and others. I cannot blame her for thinking that because everyone also thought of that for a time. It wasn't until she asked him about it and he replied, of course not, what makes you think that? Salad gets in on the conversation talking about how this happened. She saw and heard Science Beard growl at a poor, unsuspecting freshman who accidentally bumped into him during passing period. He would push girls and boys out of the way to get through. I began to think about my interactions with Science Beard. He hissed and screeched at me in the hallways, and I almost threw a punch. I didn't though, because there was a teacher in the area. 
He made loud dinosaur noises during a dinosaur documentary for extra credit for the whole class period, despite everyone's annoyance would not stop even when the teacher told him to shut up and got visibly upset when there was a dinosaur messing around scene. The camera panned away from it and the sounds can still be heard and ended up telling the teacher who scolded him, yelling at him to get over it. Wait a second, is this guy getting jealous because of a dinosaur? Made unwanted remarks and puns and laughed at his own jokes and would look around for everyone's reaction. I'm thinking he just got a kick out of everyone being irritated. Everyone in the group listens, laughs, and tells the encounters with the beard until the bell rings. Art Fav, Skater Boy, Salad, and I make haste to our classes, leaving the library. It was Friday after all. We all said our goodbyes and make way, leaving Science Beard Lunch Talk in the library where it belongs. That's all I have for y'all. I hope y'all enjoy this addition to Science Beard. You know, I will have to say the one thing I honestly really didn't like about that school is the fact that the teachers didn't want to do anything about it because this could be basically harassment that they don't want to take care of and they don't want to do anything about. And seriously, it's this whole, oh, he just wants to know, you know, I don't want to get to know this guy, okay? The teachers don't know anything about what's going on behind the curtains and this whole zero tolerance policy thing is a load of crud. Our next story comes to us from username Kelleron. <laughs> what do you mean you're happy? This one is from four or so years ago. I was a senior in high school and the dude in question was an irritating little freshy arsehole. Not a full-fledged neckbeard, but well on his way. Before I get into this, I want to mention a few things. First, I am a thespian, never went through a questioning phase, never liked men. Second, I have trichotillomania. While I now shave my head to deal with it, I wore a very high quality wig in high school to hide my bald patches. Trichotillomania, I don't, I might have pronounced it weird. It's basically this disorder or this type of thing where you feel the need to pull your hair out and it does, it is something that can be very noticeable. So, high school orchestra. I was a shoddy third violinist in the back. My stand partner senior year was the the future neckbeard. He was very loud about games and anime. Not that I'm judging, I like both in moderation as well, but in the worst way possible. Always boasting, always talking over the teacher, just everything. You know the type. On the first day of orchestra, I knew it was going to be a long year. Still, I try to be understanding of all people. I mean, he maybe had autism, maybe he had been homeschooled prior to high school and didn't realize his behavior was inappropriate. I didn't know his life story, so I was polite to him. He, this ended up up being a bad decision. He became more and more flirtatious towards me, but I just ignored it. One day during rehearsal, he mentioned something about us being stand partners. It was too long ago to remember what, and the conversation went as follows. Yeah, last year my stand partner was my ex, so this is better. It was really awkward. Who was your partner? She's at the first stand this year. This was apparently mind-blowing to him. He had a visual reaction. Wait, she? Yeah, I'm happy. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. I like girls. Cue the most fish mouth stare I've ever seen. Um, okay, is there anything else I should know about you? At this point, I dealt with a few months of him being a butthole and almost everyone around him, calling people stupid, saying he was better than others, yelling about anime, etc. I decided to frick with him for a bit. Yeah, I wear a wig. Oh, I highly doubt that smug a little look on his face. I then lifted up the front of my lace. I've never seen someone's face fall so quickly. All his hopes of having a hot senior girlfriend dissipated. If I didn't dislike him so much, I would have almost felt bad. Wonder how he's doing these days. Hope to never find out. Yeah, you know, cause that's exactly how that thing kinda works. I like this type of person. Oh, no you don't. Nope, nope. I know better than you. I know more than you. I have a 200 level IQ and that's because I do not shower because the shower drains my IQ and rinses off the intelligence. Our last story comes to us from user name Avatar Fangirl 95 Parking lot neckbeard, the weirdest moment I've ever had. Today, I had been making a road trip to my uncle's annual Super Bowl party slash reunion. He lives in another state, so I've been on the road for about 10 hours, and I am starving. I got something from McDonald's and stopped in a parking lot of the Kroger's nearby to eat. Now, I was eating like a pig, not gonna lie. I was just stuffing fries into my mouth like I hadn't eaten in years. I just wanted to get done as soon as possible. I had my window cracked because it's hot. Next thing I know, I hear knocking on my window. I jumped three feet in the air and could feel my heart beating. Outside my window was this guy. He had the typical neck beard and was overweight. He asked, you can eat all those fries? And then stuck his hand into my open window and asked, give me some of those fries with his palm open. He just stood there like that for quite a while and at least a minute, but then walked off and left 
Fine, be selfish. He didn't seem hostile or anything, he just was laughing the whole time, but still, I was freaked out. I was planning to go into the Kroger myself, but just pulled off, and not wanting to run into him again. Yeah, I I'm not a fan of gas stations either whatsoever. I mean, the last time I went to go fill up my Jeep, um, some dude didn't just ask for cash, he asked if I could fill up his gas tank, and it was kind of hard to understand what he said until I basically tried to translate it for him, and when he nodded yes, uh, that's when I figured, I'm not, pay you I'm not using my car to fill up your tank. People are just weird at gas stations, bottom line. But with that, that's going to have to be it for the video. If you had liked what you had seen, be sure to like the video, comment down below what you liked about the video, and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and bye-bye.